we are going on what we're recording on YouTube. Well, now you, <laughs> this is acting acting crazy. Um, but anyways, we thank we're thankful and grateful for everyone being on, and um, we're appreciative of you guys. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your effort, your energy, etc. And um, thank you for being with us. We're going to hashtag finish strong. This is our year of pursuit. We give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh Elohim, um, and we're thankful to Him. He is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Uh, to him be all glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. We give all praises to the Most High for uh, my wife, the Honorable Maya, Minister Maya, who lives a life that's able to be honored. Um, we're grateful for her. We give all honor to each and every one of you who are listening today and have decided to come on with us. If it's your first time, or if it's your, um, you know, many, you're, you know, you've been with us many times before. We're thankful and grateful for you and everybody coming over and being with us on this rising. And uh, we're going to continue our Sermon on the Mount series. So we're in part 13 today. And um, and thank you for those who came on the Early Riser Bible study session with us as well. Um, we're grateful we do that every Monday um, at 8 o'clock a.m. Eastern or New York time. Um, so if you, or I'm sorry, that's it's every 6.45, 6.45 a.m. Eastern or New York time. Um, shalom to you also. So welcome, everybody. We appreciate you for being on, all the people coming on all the different platforms. Steven, I see you on there. Thank you so much. And so we're grateful and thankful for this. Ransom, how you doing? Sister Dashima, how you doing? Shalom. So let's get into this. And we've talked about so many different things. We have this on YouTube. We have this stuff uploaded. Um, if you'd like to be able to find it at some point, go feel free to just go on YouTube and look these things up um, and, and be with us on our journey. And, um, we're excited about so many different things coming up, including in about two weeks or so, you know, having more time <laughs> during the day where a lot of stuff that's been falling behind can actually be dealt with and dealt with correctly. More family time for me coming up, more rest for me coming up, man, man, I always be missing these spots on my face when I'm on my face in the rising. I don't know what's going on. Um, anyways, um, Thank you for being on with us. We appreciate you. And we're going to get ready to get into this right now. Hey, how you doing? Uh, Sister Betty, I'm in. Um, and you can always find us just looking up hashtag find Kofi. There's multiple platforms to find us on. Um, TikTok, we have multiple platforms. YouTube, we have a platform. Um, podcast, we have a platform. Um, you know, you, um, oh, I said YouTube already. Um, Facebook from time to time. Instagram from time to time. So just keep on looking up. Looking us up, we're not going anywhere, even when people are trying to do stuff to get us to go away from who we are. Just always remember, hashtag find Kofi, hashtag F-I-N-D-K-O-F-I. -F um, so we're going to go to part 13 today. We're going to start at chapter 7. We just came out of the kingdom of heaven. We just came out of making sure people comprehend. Don't worry about certain things. You don't have to worry. Why are you worried about your life? Why are you worried about what's going to happen tomorrow? Uh, remember that that um, tomorrow is already going to take care of itself. It already has a thought process and has been created to take care of everything that's necessary for you. And remember that you have a 100% survival rate. There's nothing that you've been through that has yet caused you to not survive, right? So if there's not one thing that you haven't survived, why are you worried about surviving tomorrow, right? Um, so we're going to get into that um, on today some more, and um, we're going to get a little deeper into that. Uh, remember that we are the kingdom of heaven belongs to you. Remember that you are the salt of the earth, the city that's set on the hill. Remember that because of that, you should obey the law. Remember because you should obey the law that you should make sure that you're not in debt or being angry about something that would take you away from your journey. Remember how important it is for marriage and it is for us to come together. That's why we even have a marriage class that we do, right? Remember how vital and important and necessary it is for us to comprehend not to swear by heaven or earth or somebody's um, you know, somebody's grave or something like that. Just let your communication be yay and uh, yay or, or nay. Let it be yes or no. Uh, remember that if you try to hurt, pe um, help hurt people, hurt people will, will try to hurt you sometimes. And so sometimes you're going to have to be ready to be hurt when you're doing kingdom business, right? Remember all these different things um, that are happening. They're there for us. They're there to remind us of who we are and when people say stuff about us because we're doing what we're supposed to do rejoice and be exceeding glad remember not to be like the hypocrites or the hypocrites who are leaders who want credit for everything that they're trying to do you know you do what you do and y'all will give you credit in public for what it is that you do behind the scenes right um, remember what prayer is prayer is communication and and um, you know what is it nine uh, or 93 uh, percent of communication is nonverbal right so don't worry about um, 
every single word being perfect, this or that or whatever, at times you need to make sure, not at times, all the time, make sure that what you do is vital, is important, that you're consistent, etc. right? Remember these things, keep doing these things repetitively over and over again for the righteous cause, for the righteous reasons. Hey, Shalom, um, Chef, how you doing? So we talked about these, we've talked about making sure that you don't have cognitive dissonance, you know, make sure that you're fasting from certain things or abstaining from certain things that will allow you to be holy, to be whole, and therefore you won't have to worry about cognitive dissonance, trying to figure out this and that whatever and remember that we should focus seek ye first the kingdom because everything you need is provided for you in the kingdom amen all right we've established all that let's get into part 13 we're going to read um matthew chapter 7 and we go from matthew chapter 7 um verse 1 all the way through um, um verse set or verse 6 matthew chapter 7 verse 1 all the way through verse 6. This is part 13 of our kingdom series, right? Uh, this is part uh, mem, right? This is where we get the water, the blood, the spirit from, right? This is part mem. This is part 13 um, of, of the book of Matthew, Matthias, uh, Matthew, etc., right? And we're going to focus on Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 6. All right, here we go. It says, judge not that ye be judged, or that ye, that ye be not judged, excuse me, for with that for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with that measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, here goes that word again, hypocrite, somebody who lives underneath the criteria, right? You live underneath the criteria, right? You have something that's in your eye that's worse, but you're ready to pull out everybody else's stuff and yours has gotten to a place to where you can't even function. How are you even going to reach my eye and you got a beam in yours, right? But you're ready to help everybody else out and have first dealt with the issues in your own life. You are a hypocrite. You live underneath the standard. So thou hypocrite. First cast out the beam of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote of thy brother's eye. In verse 6, it says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Okay. The, we, we know that the word of Yah is already blessed. Shalom, how you doing, um, gifted hands? So, we know that the word of Yah is already blessed. All right? So, check this out. He says what? He says, why are you looking at the moat in your somebody else's eye? Matter of fact, let's go to this. So, the whole thing of this is talking about judgment. What are you judging by? What are you judging people by? Is, is the judgment something that you don't even live by? What is the standard that you live by? Now, there's another verse that goes with this. You, you're used to this other verse, right? This is actually, remember, you know, there's four different, you know, when we're looking at this, um, the 66 books, we're dealing with four specific books here. The Gospel of Yeshua HaMashiach, according to Matthew, Luke, uh, I'm sorry, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? So we're dealing with four different perspectives on him talking about the same thing. Right, Yashra doing the same thing, talking about the same thing, healing the same people, the same situations. You're dealing with four different perspectives. So let us look at another perspective that you're probably more familiar with. Because Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 um, and 2, once again, it says, Judge not that ye be judged. For with what, ye, what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Okay, so you're used to seeing something else. Let's go to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 6, and verses 37 and 38. Now, I'm going to read verse 38 because you're used to verse 38, but you usually don't put what he just said with verse 38, right? So I'm going to read verse, Luke chapter 6, verse 38 first. Then we're going to go back one verse to verse 37, all right? Luke chapter 6, and verse 38, it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Great measure, or Elohim's measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured um, measured to you again. So whatever you give out is what you will receive. Glad to see you as well, Nubus. Right? So whatever you give out 
He says, that's what you're going to get back. Whatever what you give out, be ready to receive it back. Let's go back one verse, though. Luke chapter 6, verse 37. It says, judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. That's Matthew chapter 5, verses uh, 9 through uh, 14, or 9 through 15, right? We, we talked about that, right? Forgiveness is crucial, right? Now, right, so put the two verses together, and we see that if you, the way you judge people is how you be judged, right? What, the way that you condemn people is what Yah's going to do as far as condemnation for you. Thanks for the love, Sharice. The way that you what? The way that you not judge and condemn, but also, next on the list, the way that you what? The way that you forgive is the way that you will be forgiven. So whatever you give, it shall be given unto thee. Elohim's mention pressed down, shaken and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, it's going to be measured back unto you. Thank you for the love, Sister Tamar. So, or Minister Tamar, so watch this. So on all those things we're talking about, give and it shall be given. Now let's go a little further though in the Luke chapter 6. We don't, let's, let's make sure that we have this correct. Luke chapter 6. Hey, Shalom, um, Cassandra, how you doing? So now Luke chapter 6 and verse 30, uh, um, let's go to verse 39. Right? Because this is all happening, right? This is the Sermon on the Mount. So Luke is telling you something else that he got out the Sermon on the Mount. This is what he remembers, right? Uh, we can talk about that, Sister Beverly, in a second. We're, we're going to talk about that. That's a great question, right? So Luke chapter 6, verse 39. And he spake a parable unto them Can the blind lead the blind? Hmm. Somebody who's got a moat in their eye. Matthew chapter 7, verse 3. If you're, if you're blinded, can you lead the blind? Can you pick out what's in your brother's eye? Right? Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall in the, into the ditch? Hmm. The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. So, so if you're going to try and be a master and a teacher, and yet you are blind... Right. Catch the context. If you're trying to tell people how to judge certain situations in their lives and trying to say the Bible says this or whatever your your laws that you're using, your constitutional law, your law of equity, your law of um, you know, your natural law, your universal law, your laws of attraction, your laws of first mention, etc. Hey, Shalom, um, um, Sister Don, how you doing? If if you're trying to use this law. Right. And yet you have a problem. With, with with seeing the law because you've got things blinding you. You're not quite legal enough or you're not up on legal terminology. How are you going to use the law to teach somebody else? Because the disciple, the person being disciplined under you, the child being disciplined under you, the people being disciplined under you, the family members being disciplined under you, the, the, the canon that you're using to be disciplined under, the culture you're being used to discipline under, right? You will only be as perfect as your master. You will only be as perfect as your standard. Your standard is what causes your salvation. Mm. Your standard is what causes your salvation. What is salvation again? Salvation means the place I've arrived in due to being salvaged. I must be salvaged in order to reach a place of salvation. Right? So if I'm not salvaged correctly, hear what I'm saying? If I am not salvaged correctly, if I'm not using a standard that's purging me of some things, Right then, I won't be able to reach a place of being in salvation. I'm only as perfect as my master. That's why your master should never be your pastor. Your master, right? Your your pastor should be a master, but your master of masters should be the one your pastor goes to. Right? Your master should be who you go to. Who do you go to for your thought process? For your recognition? For if I don't comprehend what the law says, who are you listening to? What are they suggesting that you read? How are they suggesting that you read it? Have they taught you characters? Characters don't change. If your character is A, B, C, and D, if your character is Aleph, um, Alpha and Omega, and your character is not Aleph through Tub, then how are you going to comprehend what the person who spoke using Aleph through Tub is saying? This is why we're saying the things that we're saying. This is why we're teaching what we've been teaching. How do you do these things? How, how, do you, how do you reach a certain level 
right? How do you get to a certain level and you don't have the right master? You're a disciple. You're a disciple. You're disciplined in whatever your master presents. Hey, how you doing, Sister Shante? You're disciplined in whatever the master presents. Can I say that one more again? You are disciplined inside of whatever the master presents. So if you're disciplined in what the master presents, however, you are your master is inconsistent or your master has a flawed culture and gives you flawed beliefs and leads you to f false um, emotional sensibilities, which causes you to um, be involved in some things that lead you to a bad feeling that now has you in terrible moods that now is affecting your effort or energy. Of course, your habits have been off. Of course, you haven't reached the desired um, goals that you want to because you're, you're disciplined under terrible circumstances, under terrible things. You're disciplined under something that's anti what should be established in your life. Right? You're dis you're, you're, <clears throat> you are non-disciplined. Right? To be disciplined by somebody, something that is undisciplined, you might as well just say you're not disciplined. So you are a disciple of something that has no dis a discipline. Discipline. And many of us are caught in that. Many of us are caught in something to where I don't like what you say, so I just lie. This is why we're on this on the second ch TikTok channel today, or the original TikTok channel today. Because somebody doesn't like something, so they say something. And TikTok doesn't like you, so they just go ahead and lie to take you off, right? And so now, here you are in a situation. Now, you got to see what you're still going to do. you still got to press. But I want you to see a lot of people are sticking with that. That's the context of this. So now let's go back to Matthew chapter 7. Verses 1 and 2. So judge not that ye be judged. Matthew's focusing on the judge. Now, why would Matthew focus on judging? And he wouldn't talk about, you know, um, judge, not be judged. But he would leave out condemn, lest you be condemned. And why would he leave out um, forgive, lest you be forgiven? Why would Matthew do that? But Luke would pick up on that. Well, Luke is a doctor. Luke is a healer. Luke has to be empathetic. Right? Luke is a, is a healer. So he has to be empathetic to people, right? Matthew was a tax collector. They didn't like Matthew very much, right? When Matthew joined, people got mad and upset. Why would you let Matthew join with you? Why are you running with tax collectors? Oh, why? Yashua, what's up with that, man? You know, this dude be taxing us. This dude is, is stuck with Rome and all that. But he said to Matthew, he said, look, man, forget all that. Even though you're a tax collector, you a traitor right now. But give that up. Come to your peak. Come to me. Follow me. I'll teach you to be a fisherman of men. I'll teach you to let that go. I'll teach. So, so his thing, Matthew is more legal in thought process than many are. That's why Matthew, first thing, Matthew, Luke does it too, because physicians have to make sure that they know who your family member is. What are the DNA problems that you've had? What is some DNA memory? What's some generational curses? What do people eat before you, et cetera, et cetera? Do you have a family history of this, that, whatever, right? So Luke is very big. So that's why Luke in chapter three gives you um, Yashua's bloodline, his DNA line, right? But Matthew, he starts off in chapter one because he's a tax collector. He got to know whose family you're part of. He has to know if you're a Levite. He has to know if you're Judah. He has to know if you're um, Benjamin. He has to know these things, right? So Matthew starts off, right? And, and Matthew starts off and says, let me make sure I hit these, these notes for you real quick, right? Math, Matthew's like, I got to make sure you're disciplined, <laughs> right? Matthew says, real quick, we're going to make sure that you're disciplined in this and disciplined in law, right? And so he gives you that, right? So Matthew is focused on law. So Matthew says, in Matthew chapter 7, he says, judge not. You're talking about law, right? Judge not, especially if you're not using law, lest, uh, lest you be judged. That stuck out to him. He said, I got that. I'm a tax collector. I know. So when I'm judging people, I have to judge them according to a certain Roman standard. And I also have to use Hebrew standards. I have to use culture. I have to use all these things. So I remember this, judge not. Let ye be judged. He said, let me share that with y'all. I remember him on the Sermon on the Mount. He said this specific thing. Don't judge. That's why the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, all the way up so far to chapter 7, verse uh, 6. So far, everything's been a lot about law, a lot about le legality, right? Because Matthew is somebody who's about law. The kingdom of the Mount, on, uh, the Sermon on the Mount stuck out to him because that whole thing was about kingdom, sovereignty, law, legality, case study, all these things, he's like, yep, I got this. He started writing stuff down from the beginning, right? He started realizing from the beginning, man, like something about this guy, he's got this stuff legally. Like, this is what I do. This is what I'm trained to do. This is what my calling is. And his calling that everybody else hated him for, that he was using, and he was using against his people, is the very thing that now we use to be able to be a benefit to our people. Like we said, 
The same way that he raised the serpent in the wilderness, he used something that might cause certain people, and thanks for the love, Chef, uh, that he caught, that caused certain people pain and anguish and poison. He said, if you lift that serpent up, right, I will draw the poison out. I will draw, even draw all men. Well, here he is, a tax collector. Somebody was out there before and was in judgment and stuff and was judging people based off of Greco-Roman mentality, now gets in the kingdom and says, oh, I like this. I like judging people off of the real deal. You see that? You see how that works and grows and moves together, right? And then, then verse two, he says, for with judgment ye judge, how you judge people, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, so with the judgment you give out, it shall be measured to you again. So the question that was asked earlier, the judgment, if you are not, when people say don't judge me, the only thing you should not judge as far as stuff is trying to talk about somebody's salvation or trying to say that they're evil or speaking evil upon somebody. That's not your call. <clears throat> but if somebody does evil according to the word, you have every right to call it out, right? When people say, don't judge, don't judge. You can't judge me. You shouldn't judge anybody at all. Don't judge anything anybody does. Don't tell your children how to live. Don't tell people how to operate this, that, whatever. You know what the interesting thing is about that when people say that? The interesting thing about that when people say that is, all right, so you're saying not to judge anybody at all for anything. Okay, question. When you go to a restaurant and they bring your food out, you don't like the way that your food is, is presented or it's the way your food is cooked and you deem it or judge it as something that you should not eat, do you not ask for them to take it back or not ask for your money back? You judge the food, right? If your child goes to a school and the school is teaching them in a terrible manner and your child's not reaching their potential and you find out it's because of something the, the teacher's doing, you judge it by a standard. There's a certain standard that you assume the teacher will be using and when the teacher doesn't use it, you say, oh, I don't like the fact that you're not using the standard correctly. And you judge the teacher, um, you know, through that standard, through that prism, right? You judge, right? When the sun <clears throat> is out, you judge that it'll be a nice sunny day. When it's cloudy and it looks like it might rain, you judge that it will rain. You judge constantly. The judging is not the problem. It is the standard that you're using to judge, right? Like, for example, we learned recently um, that... Um, we we uh, did a, a little group meeting and we met at the um, at the uh, the National Mall in Washington D.C. somewhat ago um, months ago now I can't remember how many months ago but we met and it was getting it said it was getting ready to rain and so it said it was like forty percent chance of rain we were looking out and we were like well you know it's not it's not any any chance of raining or whatever like we don't see any rain so it must be good and brother Kenyatta who used to be a pilot. He said, nope, time out. He said, I'm still going home. It's probably going to rain some, somewhere, especially if we're driving certain places. Well, we said, it's, well, it, it looks nice here. He said, well, the, the percentage of rain <clears throat> is not talking about the percent that is going to rain, the chance of rain. When it says 40% chance of rain, it means that in your area, they, they believe that there's going to be 40% of your area that will catch rain. So you might be in a nice pocket, but you might start driving home it might run into some rain. And I believe by the time we got back home, we actually ran into some rain, right? Showing that he was aware of these things as a pilot and as somebody who has to know weather, right? So, um, you know, you might hear something, so you're judging something off the wrong standard. If you hear today 80% chance of rain, but it doesn't rain, you'll say, the weatherman doesn't know what he's talking about. And not saying the weatherman always knows what he's talking about, but the first thing we'll do is say the weatherman doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, that's not what he's saying. He's saying that you might, if you don't experience rain that day, right, let's say you stay in one place all day and you don't have any rain, you say, man, it didn't even rain today. It doesn't mean that it was an 80% chance that you would get rain. It meant that in the area you live in, there's an 80% chance, right? There's 80% of the area they expect it to rain in, right? Now, if it only rains in 20% of all the areas, then they're wrong. But if it rains in 80% and you didn't happen to be in a 20% that didn't rain, it doesn't mean that they're wrong. It means that that you just didn't experience the rain. You see that? So it's the same concept. Like you you are judging people, but what are you judging them by? Do you even comprehend the 80-20, so to speak? Right? Do you comprehend what it is that the word is actually saying? When the word says judged, are you judging by what they actually say? This actually says judged by. Right? So if you're going to say, man, you shouldn't eat that, are you basing it off this or are you basing it off tradition? Matthew chapter 15 um, verses 1 through 13.
<clears throat> talked about with that with somebody yesterday, right? Um, you know, this is this is this is stuff that we don't comprehend. So somebody will say, "Oh, what only goes in the body is what def or it doesn't defile a man, but what comes out of the body defiles a man." So I can eat whatever I want. That's not what that scripture is talking about. Don't use that scripture for that. That's not talking about the food you eat. It's talking about the fact that the, the uh, religious leaders were trying to get Yahshua HaMashiach and trying to get his disciples, box him in on the fact that his disciples weren't washing up to the elbows. They were saying, that's the custom and tradition that our elders kept. Why don't you keep those same thing? And he said, well, you don't obey the law. If you don't obey the law, then we're not worried about your traditions and customs. And then he said, hey, everybody come here. Right? So he calls everybody over and says, look at these hypocrites over here. Look. They talking about all this stuff or whatever. Look, it ain't even what goes in a man where the man's eating as much. You didn't understand what's coming out. These people are on some foolishness speaking some things out to you. That's what he was talking about. That's the that's the context. But a lot of us are not, but a lot of us will use that scripture to say, oh, you can eat whatever you want. It doesn't matter what goes in you. It just matters what comes out. Well, no, it does matter what comes in you. Why? Because um, it, it out of the out of the heart. Right? The abundance of the heart doth the mouth speak. <clears throat> if I have things entering into me that are messing with my heart, then I'll speak some craziness. Right? Also, too, if I'm having issues with things that I'm eating that are going to cause me health issues, then out of me is going to come some things that are going to manifest like sickness, health problems, maybe, being, um, maybe getting something that makes me contagious because I wasn't able to heal from within, so now it's coming out, right? Like, so you're using a context of something that doesn't make sense. So you're judging according to what the word actually says, what the law actually says. You said you can't have anything into you? Yeah, n not, nothing that's negative for certain. Now, we want positivity. That's why we say, yo, you, you have stuff entering into you all day, including what I'm saying. That's why I say all the time, hey, study to show yourself approved in the Yahweh, Right? That you can be a workman, need and not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, so that you're not using vain sayings and things like that, but you might be able to use things that help to change the world. Right? Like, we have to think about those things, but we don't think about those things in that regard. We're not really thinking about things in that regard, but everything that I receive, I need to study it. Anything that I get from somebody, I don't care how great it sounds. I don't care if off chance it sounds 100% with everything I'm gone. I got to study that thing. I, I've got to study it even in my life. Let me try that out real quick the way that they said. Let me see if it works. Now, let me try it out the way that I would like to. Let me try it out the way that they said. See the see the difference? If Yashua says, pray in this manner, right? That was part, um, that was part, that was part 10. Pr when you pray, pray in this manner, 10, or part Yao, the hand of Yah. When you pray, pray like this. Be consistent in your prayers with this. Right? If you pray and you're not praying with the consistency that he said pray, that's on you. Right? Then you talk about, I didn't get anything out that prayer. Well, that's your fault. <laughs> right? It's not that you didn't get, that the prayer doesn't work. You didn't do you didn't do what he said do. Well, when you judge others, are you judging others according to something greater than yourself? This is why when you judge others too, it shouldn't come off as a negative thing, but it should come off as constructive criticism out of a certain type of love that meets the criteria of somebody's love language. Right? If, if I meet the criteria of someone's love language, then I'm in a better place. I'm able to reach them in an easier place. Right? Talking with somebody about this the other day. Like, I have a problem sometimes where I do this. Well, if I'm doing this when I'm listening to you, or I'm talking to you, it seems like I might have an attitude. Now, that's not what my love language says. But if that's what your love language says, let me unfold my arms while I'm speaking to you so that now we can have greater conversation. You can hear what I'm saying. This might stop me crossing my arms, might stop you from hearing the conversation. But me uncrossing my arms might allow somebody else to hear what I'm saying. I do that so do a lot of others, right? So those are the little things, right? Hey, sh um, Shalom, Brother Kevin. How you doing, Minister Kevin? I actually need to reach out to you. We're probably going to see if we can finish up with you. We did another session on men. We're probably going to bring you back for the third and last session. Glad to, glad to have you back on. Thanks for being on the podcast. Um, so these are things that, that you work on, right? So how are you judging according to what standard do you judge? Is it biblical? Is it Tarah? Right? Is it the word of Yah? Etc. right? Verse 3, And why beholdest thou the mote in thy brother's eye? Now, now, after we got all that together, and we talked about the blind leading the blind, Luke the, the physician hears the blind leading the blind. He he heard the moat, but the Luke focuses on what? Like the 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 blind lead the blind, right? So the blind man can't lead blind a blind person. Both will fall into a ditch. 
right? No matter how great. There are people who are out there. They got the walking stick. They know how many steps this. They have great memory. They can remember, okay, I'm on this street. That means that I got to take 200 steps this way or that way or whatever. They can remember and do all that stuff, right? Right, but there's some, but still, there are certain things that they better, they better have somebody to lead them through, right? You put Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles in front of a piano, and they will tear it up. I forget the young gentleman that actually was a great piano player from the 1800s, 1700s, blind black man, amazing piano player. You can do, they can get in front of the piano, do all that stuff, right? But you might need to lead them onto the stage to the piano, or else they might kick a bunch of stuff over or fall or hurt themselves or hurt somebody else, right? So, so even though they can do great things, they still need to be led by somebody who can see. That's what, so, so Luke focuses as the physician on being blind, right? Or the terrain can change, right? Take the beam out. Let's build with that, that, right? That lumber, right? Or, or I like that too. So I see what you said with that. So watch this. So here it is that he says, and, and Matthew was focusing, right? So Luke said the blind can't lead the blind. Well, Matthew was like, well, the, I like the part that he said as far as what? That there's a beam in your eye, or I'm sorry, there's a, but, but you're focusing on the moat in somebody else's. You got a two by four sticking out of yours, but you're trying to get that little, that little splinter out of somebody's eye, right? Here you are that, you, that you're blind to the fact or ignoring the fact or ignorant to the fact that you can't even see it all because something's lodged in your eye. And whether you'll ever be able to see that eye or not, we should at least dislodge the beam. How many people are you hitting? How many times are you hurting your head and having headaches because you're running into things because you can't see them, <laughs> right? There's a beam in your eye, but you're quick to judge somebody on the moat, on the little splinter that's in their eye. Talking about what they can and can't see, They're, what they can and can't believe. You don't even know what belief is, like we've talked about before. If I say badashit and you don't even know that that's the very first word of the Bible and you don't even know how to break that down, how are you going to tell me what I'm right or wrong about? If you, if you can't see that you are abusive, abnormal usage, so people think abusive means I got to slap you, right? You see the person because you can see that out of the eye. You can see out of the physical eye, but you're not seeing out of the spiritual eye. So out of the physical eye, you can see, oh man, that person's hitting that person. But you can't see when you go home and you yell at your spouse or you yell at your children or you say, well, you know what? I'm just, I'm just dealing with some stuff. My hormones are all, and I'm going to just say whatever, right? Men or women, because men can have periods, men have periods too. Like men actually have periods too. We don't bleed, but we have periods. We have times of the month too. So you going home and it's like, well, I just, I'm just in a bad mood. I'm just in the fun. Everybody just leave me alone. Right. Won't show no love to anybody. This and that. You can't see that that's abusive. You can only see when somebody puts their hands on somebody. You said sometimes people are just evil um, to the fact. So choose to mislead others. That happens with people too. Right. But really that's somebody dealing in darkness. So we still say they're blind. I mean, they might see a little more what they're doing, but they're still really blind. To lead somebody in the darkness, somebody living in darkness, trying to lead people out of light in the darkness, they still leading them into being blind. You know. So, so we're 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 in this position. We're we're stuck in this place. We're looking. We're dealing with some things because a lot of people around here are still trying to. And thanks for being part of the community. Um, is that our flow? Our flow in heart. Or or flowing heart. I'm not sure, but thanks for being on. Appreciate it. Sorry if I miss, miss uh, read it. You know, but th these are these are things that we're dealing with, right? And so people are judging because they can't even see what they're doing. But they try and watch this because your judgment is off. Now you're teaching other people to have bad judgment, and they don't even have the level of of, of generational curses and and bad habits and bad decision making and being frustrated with everybody and being arrested many times and having multiple um, women instead of one wife and all they don't even have all the baggage you have but here you are trying to lead them this is what happens at the barbershop this is what happens at the at the beauty salon all the time right you go there and you start hearing all these conversations and y'all start having these long conversations. I used to be part of them somewhat, you know, I cut a lot of them off, but I used to be part of some of them. And it might be something as simple as, did you check out the game? Did you see what so-and-so wore to, man, shoot, you know, this is how I deal with my women and you need to make sure you deal with yours. Now, here I am, a married man sitting in a chair and I've got to entertain this dude who's trying to tell me about his women and I'm trying to be faithful to one wife and become one with her, right? Here you are at the beauty salon. And you're listening to your, your somebody in there that can't even keep a man, can't even get a husband, is frustrated, says all men are trash, 
right? But here you have a man that's not trash and you're trying to listen to this person tell you how it is to make sure that your relationship's going to work, right? <laughs> you said barbershop talk made you go get your clippers, you know, get your own clippers. That's funny, right? That's, that's real. Like you will hear a whole bunch of stuff in there, right? People who are blind with, with, with beams in their eye talking on stuff where you like, well, you know, my, my, my husband, my husband and I, we had an argument, you know, I was, he was saying I didn't listen to him and I didn't like the fact he said I didn't listen. And then somebody, right, that's your moat. So somebody comes in with a beam and says what? Oh yeah, you know, girl, none, none of these men listen and blah, blah, and this and that. Uh, men can't even act right. And, you know, uh, they don't even be doing stuff right in the bedroom. And listen, it's like, that's, that's not even my issue. I just had a moat. <laughs> I just had a little splinter. I just, you know, we had a communication <laughs> problem that we were arguing about who listens and stuff. You talking about sexual stuff and all that. Like, we good. We good there. You know, like, I'm not looking for anybody. Else. But they start putting stuff in your head. Right? So it says, so it says what? That, so it says when you do this, in verse 5, you are a hypocrite. You are a hypocrite. You are beneath the standard that you profess to be in. When you are busy, where you can't keep a man, you can't keep a woman, you can't satisfy a woman, you can't be about keeping that woman secure, you can't make sure your man feels heard, you won't make sure your woman feels things so that she does things, you will make sure your man does things and, um, and you do things for him that makes him feel a certain way, you won't do these things, and yet, here you are, trying to tell somebody else advice about their marriage. Right? Now, I'm not saying you have to be married to tell somebody about marriage, but at least be faithful to the most high. Be married to him correctly before you start talking to somebody else. You can't even make sure that you're being obedient to him, but you're ready to tell somebody else how to not submit to their husband, especially if their husband is being sub submissive to Adon or to Yahweh. What? <laughs> right? Like, it doesn't even make sense. You got, a you, you got a husband that submits to the most high. He says, I'm ready to move. You're seeing the movement. You're seeing when he says, dude, you're starting to see great things happen. You're starting to see your life change. You're starting to see your children act a certain way. You're seeing there's a difference between your family and other families. You're starting to see finances come in. You're starting to see all these different things. And yet you're still at the position in the business of trying to listen to somebody else who can't even get their own stuff straight. You've got a wife that sits there and makes sure that your house is great and takes care of your children and is homeschooling and is, and is, 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 is cooking and cleaning and it has her own job if she wants it, you know, has her own business. If she doesn't support you, that, that has become her business and doing all these great things. And here you are listening to some dude that's trying to tell you about how, how you got to holler at five girls and be confident in all five that you holler at because one of them will let you hit. Sorry to be so blunt, but that's how, you know, that's what people be talking about. Right? Yeah, watch who you listen to. That that's that's come on. Why are we even entertaining that? Why would you even entertain that? Why would you even think twice about entertaining such a thing? Why would you even think twice about that? You see? Why would you think twice about that? The reason you think twice about it is because that you're not willing to judge that person correctly. I judge you as somebody I shouldn't really, you know, I judge you by a standard. I judge everything by a standard higher. So when you start telling me, look, yeah, we had a communication issue, but we didn't have to take it to that. Like, you got some problems, sis. I'm praying for you. Right? Bruh, I know, look, you talking about this, that, or whatever. Like, my, I, I'm not hollering at mine. Like, she's, she's my wife. Why would I worry about how I approach different women. I need to talk about this specific women. So maybe I need to leave your advice alone and go to somebody that can judge by a higher standard. Hey, you've been married for 30 years over there. How do you deal with it? Hey, you follow the word of Yah. You've been married for 30 years. How have you been able to make sure that you've been committed and righteous in your relationship? You know, the standard that you're going by, who's leading you? Who is your master? Whoever is your master that's what you're going to be disciplined by. Whoever your master is, that's who will discipline you, right? Right? So so this is why then in verse 6 now, we also must see the flip side of this, that you've got to better be careful. That's why I said some things we don't even say on the lives. We don't even present anymore because I realize some people try to take certain things that you say and they try to use it negatively. That's real, right? That's why. That's one of the main reasons. We always talk about when it comes to sovereignty that... Um, 
you know, one of the things you have to be careful about, like there's so there's people who have used things of sovereignty to be able to get out of things they should have been put in, in prison for. Like there was a guy in a case, I don't know how many years ago, but there was a guy in a case and people try to use this against sovereign people who are sovereign, right? They try to say sovereign citizens. So these are people that don't know what sovereignty is, but they try to use it against you. Right. And so there was a guy, he actually, um, basically was, um, you know, there, he was a softball coach and it wasn't one of his players, but it was somebody who was a child that used to come and from age five up until like age 14 or so. So for a huge part of their life, they had been getting um, raped by this guy. I won't even go into the details of what he was doing to her, but it was pretty serious stuff. And um, finally, he got, uh, you know, it was said by the whatever he was put in. Um, I think he was put in, well, he was put in jail and um, the trial and everything went on, I guess. Um, I think he was able to get out or whatever, moved or whatever. And the trial took, it took two years to finally get to the end of the trial and they let him go. You know why? They let him go because of UCC 1-308. He knew it. And so because he knew it and he signed the document and stuff, he, he literally said all the stuff he did. He said how it made him feel. He said how it made him feel emotionally. He said um, the perverted thoughts that went through his head. He said how he got off on it. All those. He, 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 he wrote it down. But you know what he got off on? UCC 1-308. Because he reserved his rights. You know, so the stuff works. But remember, law protects rights. And if you can find a way to prove, even though this is the wild part, because this means the judge is on some stuff. But, but, you know, even though the judge, they try to act like the judge was hesitant. But the reality is, is look, if like, if you don't infringe upon the rights of somebody else, which is wild, because they basically had to say this little girl didn't have her rights infringed upon. But if they're able to prove that you infringe upon somebody else's rights. So there are certain things I'm limited on even when I speak. Because this is why. This is why. Matthew chapter 7 verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine. Lest they trample under their feet. Or trample them under their feet. And turn again and rend you. Hey Shalom um, Don. How you doing? Right. So be careful in your righteous judgments to not start giving some of these this righteousness. You got to be careful. This is why, once again, Yashua HaMasiach says what? This, his disciples ask, why do you speak in parables? Why does this come off as coded? Why are you not really just telling everybody outright? Why do you have certain things that you only do behind the scenes? Yashua, why is it that we're going to do certain things behind the scenes? Why is it that from now on, certain things will not be mentioned at all or bar barely mentioned. And you will know what I'm talking about because those of you who are, we have more intimate relationship and check on each other will comprehend more of this, but others will not know what we're talking about. Why is that, right? Why are we going to be careful who we give it to? Why? Because it's not for everybody. Because some people are going to take things that are eternal principles that should be used for righteousness and they will try to bend them to evil, right? Some of these people are dogs, People talk about men are dogs and all this stuff. Well, there are some men that are dogs. So don't give yourself, don't give your righteousness to them. You said, offer, I offer cubic zirconium and I save diamonds for those who are industrious. You know, I'm in. You can do that, right? You know, but like, don't give everything to the dog. The dog just needs to know how to fetch. The dog needs to know how to make sure that they submit. The dog needs to know how to make sure when it's time to eat. The dog needs to know where to go and, and go number one and number two. The dog needs to know how to be on a leash. The dog does not need to know. Uh, you know, this is this is when people get wild. The dog does not need to, to know what it is to be kissed in the mouth. The dog doesn't, you know, and I'm not trying to speak bad. I'm just trying to give you an example, right? The dog is not supposed to make sure they sleep in the bed between you and your spouse, right? The dog is not supposed to think that there's so much of, of a family member that they get mad at the children and start growling at them, right? The dog has a place, right? You don't give the, the pearl to the dog. What would the dog do with the pearl? You know, you don't give the, 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 the pearl to a swine. What is the pearl? What is, what is the pig going to do with the pearl? The pig will get upset with you. That's really the context of what it's saying. The pig would get upset. It's thinking it's going to get food. You give, you give it this pearl. This pearl has value, but the pig doesn't know anything to do other than to destroy it, chew it up, and be able to utilize it for its own benefit, right? And then it says, well, you didn't give me something that I could chew up and just use for my own benefit. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to do what? I will rend you. I will try to chew you up. I will attack you.
Say Anubis says, I spent 20 years of my life in the war machine of the military and 15 years with DOD. I have zero, zero judge, jed, I guess judgment. Oh, judgment. <laughs> right. Thank you, Sister Tashima. Right. Like that's, that's, this is truth. Like there's so many people who are out here trying to do all this different stuff for all these different people, trying to listen to what everybody else has to say, trying to make sure that they approach everybody. Hey, I've got to give everybody this message. And then they say, why, you know, people get frustrated. People, I deal with people, life coaching and stuff, depressed, all this stuff. Why is it that my family you know, won't listen to me about this? Why is it that this person won't listen to me about why? Why is it that I'm telling them how to get out of this um, issue and become sovereign and to invest? And they won't listen to me and they treat, you know what? I'm not trying to make fun of your family. I'm just telling you spiritually in the place that they are right now, they're not in a position where they can handle pearls. I won't call them what they call, what, what, what Yashua called them because you might get mad at me, right? But I will tell you, maybe they're, maybe they're not able to handle pearls right now. Let's just say that. I don't want to get you mad at me because I'm name calling them, but I'm just going to tell you, maybe you're casting because you, you, you have this judgment, you judge them as something different than they are spiritually right now. And right now they can't handle pearls. It doesn't mean they can't ever, um, handle pearls ever, but right now maybe they can't handle pearls. Maybe they need to be, um, in a leashed environment. Maybe they're okay being dogs that are leashed. Right. If this wild dogs, maybe they're OK just hunting for certain things, doing this or that or whatever. You you know, you, you can let them run right now. Let them do what they do. Maybe they're in an environment where all they need is just something that they can use and use for themselves. So just only give them things that they can use for themselves because they're not trying to use anything outside of the pen. They're not trying to grow. They're not trying to cause a diaspora to change. They're not trying to own land. They're not trying to grow food. They're not trying to do things that will last for their children's children's children. They're not they're not thinking like that. They're only thinking, hey, man, I, I got to survive till tomorrow. And by the way, let us not forget such was some of us. Right? It wasn't too long ago that a lot of us were doing things just because I need my fix. A lot of us were were uh, were out there drinking. A lot of us were out there smoking smoking weed or well, I don't even mad at smoking weed, but you know what I'm saying? That's all we did all day or whatever that was the highlight of our day. Who got the weed? What club we going to go to? Where we going to get our hair did? Let's have girls night out. Let's have a night with the fellas. You know, Super Bowl party. After we finish the Super Bowl party, then we are gonna do the N the NBA Finals party before the after the before the NBA Finals. We are gonna do the NBA Eastern Conference Finals and Western Conference Finals uh, party. We 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 make comments about um, sports figures or popular figures just to say that we're better than them. Oh yeah, Kanye, he's terrible. He's this and that or whatever. You know, look at what he did with Kim. Look at all this other stuff or whatever. Look at how he treat. Look at how he treated. Um, you know, um. I forget the Amber, Amber Rose. And look at what his ex-girlfriend said in the poem about him, blah, blah. It's like, what do you, what does your ex have to say about you? Why are you judging him? And guess what? The standard that you judge people by, it's become the, it's become the beam in your eye, right? You can't even see. You talking about somebody splinter. It's become a beam. You're so busy judging everybody else and not making sure first, are you living according to what you say? One of my things that drives me crazy, y'all have heard me talk about this before. Young sister comes into church. It says, I need help. Can somebody help me financially? I'm pregnant with a child. You know, she ate up her clothes, ate up and everything. I don't know what I'm going to do. Can somebody help me? And they say, we'll pray for you. And we'll pray for you. What that translates to is we're just going to, you know, we ain't going to give you nothing. You know, you out here, you a harlot, all this stuff. Like this is what the, that translates to. We're not going to really help you with what it is that you need. We're not really going to bless you with what you need. We're just going to let you be out there. Right. Turn her away right into the street. Right. And then she goes through the stuff. Her children go through stuff generations later. And then here we are saying, look at that family, that family. is just... But you didn't live up to your own standards. So you're judging them now when you get before the most high. Guess what he's got to do? Hey, you know, that family um, over there that you didn't help. Why didn't you help them? Well, because they're this and that or whatever. So you judge them saying that they're evil and basically said you shouldn't be helping them. Meanwhile, though, didn't you have a baby out of wedlock? And aren't, aren't your children's father really their stepfather and why didn't you make sure that you loved them the way that you needed to be loved he, he's going to judge you according to your own standard given it shall be given unto you great measure pressed down shaking together and running over shall men give unto your bosom for with the same measure that you meet it's going to be given unto thee this is this is the word for the people of Yah I'm sorry Nuba said a lot of it was acceptance trying to get where we thought we fit in, yep. Yeah, and they judge her, right? They're going to get what they judge her. 
Um, Austin says, yep, very unfortunate church has done this to people. Yeah, it's very true, Anubis, Anubis right? And and really, we could use that word literally. A lot of people will be damned because of it. They're going to, they gave damnation, right? Or they gave the action of damning somebody and put them in this place called damnation. Don't get mad when you're in damnation later on. You want to give it out? Okay, give it out. Be ready to receive it. I mean, you gave it. Can you Can you handle it? It's always interesting. People can dish out stuff, right? We be having this stuff and people start joking and things like that or whatever. You be with your friends and you joking back and forth and all this stuff. So they start joking. They start hitting you with stuff. And look, you know, like I used to be somebody that joked too. Like I was the dude who was always considered himself ugly, this and that or whatever. So they start making fun of stuff. And I'd be like, man, shoot, that's all you, you got to say? I was like, if you want to make fun, I start making fun of myself. Like if you're going to make fun of me, you should have made fun of my lips. My lips is chapped. You know, my lips chapped. I better not ever, you know, um, try to kiss somebody. They're going to be missing their own mouth. Or look at my look at my teeth. I got the gap in my teeth. If somebody were to take a running start, shoot, they could just go ahead and just slide sideways through my teeth, right? Like, you know, shoot, you know like I, I would make fun of myself. Then I, then I start cooking them up. And they'd be funny until they realize, like, oh, okay, like, he, he, he can be way more mean than I can, <laughs> right? I'm very micro, so I start looking for all the little stuff. Right. And I would be careful not to bring anything else that would make people really, really bad or just it. But I would I would I could cook you up. I could serve you up with the best of them. I could Joan. That's what we call it. Joan or playing the dozens or whatever. Right. But I could Joan with the best of them. So it's like I got you. Right. And all of a sudden, though, the very person that was making funny, they couldn't handle it anymore. Right. The same thing applies. Same kind of concept. Judge and you shall be judged. If you can't handle judgment, don't give it out. Don't be mad when somebody else starts judging you. You judging how somebody else dress. Well, somebody starts saying, well, look at your clothes. Then they start serving you up and cooking you up. Don't be mad. Right? Don't get quiet. Right? Bring that same, that's what we say today. Bring that same energy. <laughs> Bring that same energy, bro. Keep that energy. Because I'm coming for you. When I come for you, I need that same energy. Right? You was talking trash about me on the court. All right. When I come back and I cross you up and I cook you up and I dunk on you. Right, I'm six five and a half. When I dunk on, when I swat all your shots, when I hold you down to zero points for three games straight, keep that same energy, bro, because I'm gonna keep it for you. <laughs> right, like keep that same energy. Right, you said something, everybody was laughing or whatever. When I stood up, right, so when I stand up in the middle of the bus and I do the old, you know, y'all know the y'all know what the modern version of you being ready to cook somebody up. And I put my hand out towards you like this. And I start saying, "Look at this man," but and I start serving you up. I start frying you up. Don't say nothing. <laughs> right right like don't don't say nothing and y'all saying like you you judge them and you was busy putting your hand out to them like this he said i'm coming for you now don't don't say don't say nothing i'm I'm cooking you up you were saying look at you you bad look at you you don't make enough money look at you you don't believe what i believe look at you you don't come to church i come to look at you you don't you know uh, your husband doesn't think um i don't like your husband look at you i don't like your wife look at you you had a child before you was married look at you okay well i'm coming to you look at you because you judged in the wrong way look at you because you you're not doing righteousness look at you i remember what you did when you were a little child look at you when you were abusive look at you when you you, you see what i'm saying look at you when you were in jail look at you when you were on drugs like you're coming towards you so don't keep that same energy when you get before the throne right it's funny until you the, you're you the person that's in the end of the joke when you're the butt of the joke it ain't so funny and what's happening is you are not the butt of the judgment so you don't think about it but he's saying keep that same energy because you don't have to come before my throne and you was saying that stuff about my children all right be ready be ready I'm coming for you, right? Be ready. You said that you said that that person was bad because they cheated on their spouse. All right, well, I'm going to look, right? I'm going to look through your browser history when you come before the throne. I'm going to say, well, they were cheating on their husband physically, but in the Sermon on the Mount series we've been doing already, hey, you was out there looking at pornography. So if you said that they deserve to be kicked out or they deserve to go to hell because they were looking at stuff, then I'm going to judge you because I see your browser history. I know what you've been looking at. Why'd you put, if you said they deserve hell, then that's what you deserve. Right? I can't believe that that person just up and left and left me the way that they did or whatever. Okay, well, I better not see that you ghosted anybody. Because if you say that that person's terrible for, for ghosting you, then you better not ever ghost anybody else. Because the same measure that you meet, it shall be given unto you. Right? 
And, and on the same flip side, be careful who you're giving this stuff to. That's the reason why a lot of this stuff even happens. You mad at a lot of people because you didn't judge them correctly. You cast your pearls to swine. You didn't check to see their resume. I can't believe so-and-so did this to me. Well, what was their resume? Well, you know, I mean, they, they came out of this and stuff, but I mean, they had a rough time, but it seemed like things were better. Were, did they really come out of it? Or were they saying they came out of it? You know, they used to abuse women, but they said they learned from that. I mean, they learned from that how? What actions have they got? Did they go to any anger management classes? Did they go to anybody to prove? Did they go back to the women and apologize to all the women that they hit? No, I mean, you know, he can change though. I mean, he can, but did he? Didn't want to come to somebody later on after the process. Thank you for the love, Jashima. Didn't want to come after the process, after they've been done wrong. Oh, I can't believe he did. I, uh, I mean, I, when I started listening to you, I can kind of believe he did. According to your words, according to your testimony about who they were, according to their testimony. Aunt, um, Sister, Sister Maya Angelou told us when somebody tells us who they are, believe them the first time. He told you the first time who he was and he didn't tell you he changed along the way. It's either out or I'm in. Like, by the way, I, I understand because I've, I've done this before in my life. Been with somebody, was with them. Person start cheating, doing stuff or whatever. Not my wife now, right? But been with somebody in the past. Person start cheating, and it's like, well, when I went on my first date, we went over to somebody else's house, and, and come to find that person's house, we were over. They were, you know, what I'm saying they were they were married to somebody else. It's only a matter of time. If that was acceptable, and I showed it was acceptable because I stayed with this person, then it was only a matter of time before they were going to do it to me. If they showed it was acceptable because their friend did and we went and spent time on the first date, that meant the first day you comfortable enough to bring me into this thing, then I can't sit up there and be like, man, it was a surprise when they did this. And then I can't blame the person for it. By the way, you know, I wasn't necessarily the greatest in the relationship either. I wasn't cheating, but I wasn't the greatest in the relationship. But also, at the end of the day, like, yeah, you know, if I... If I ended up, you know, <laughs> like like if, if 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 I knew that this person was doing this and I decided to make this work, if I wanted this to work and try to make it last forever and it didn't, I can see why it didn't. Right? Pointing your finger at somebody else. When you point your finger and your thumb at somebody else, right? Usually really you should understand that you're really pointing the thumb and three more fingers back at yourself. Right? When you want to point the finger at somebody, there's three fingers pointing at you. Look at what you did. Look at the decisions you made. Were there any signs? There were no signs at all that this wasn't going to work? The fact that you didn't even know what a husband or wife was before you got married, you didn't think that that was going to be a problem? Maybe you didn't, but now that you've got more mature, maybe you should recognize that. Yes, I do believe in generational curses, of course. Um, you know, even if you want to go by the, the term DNA memory, et cetera, but there's generational curses for sure. Um, that being said though, it's time for me to take my leave. I've got to catch up on a lot of stuff and make sure that a lot of stuff gets sent out before I get on the road. Um, thank you so much for being on those of you who even started with us early. It's rising for um, Monday for our early rise of Bible study. We appreciate you. Those that might be new to this or, um, you know, we have we usually don't use this channel pretty much at all anymore, except to try to every once in a while, make sure people know we're still around. The second channel we can't go live on right now because they decided to lie on, what, on and say that we did some stuff that we never did. So um, y'all just pray for us and keep us in mind. Um, we're thankful and grateful for everybody. Brothers in Black coming up October 30th. Be ready for that. We have our classes, um, you know, marriage, monarchy, sovereignty, um, natural medicine one, um, uh, fibroid cyst, Hebrew characters. Um, we have women in red coming up in December. We have baptism and stuff coming up in different places. Uh, for more information, just go to our website, kofi com. That's K-O-F-I hyphen O-F-O-R-I.com. You can text us at 202-704-5078. I'm sorry, excuse me, that's 410-714-5078, excuse me, 410-714-5078. You could also text us at 202-599-7312. Again, that's 202-599-7312. And remember that Women in Red is coming up in December, right? So if you want any more information on any of that stuff, just contact us. Um, you know, if you want to DM us on TikTok, if you want to put your information in the comment section on YouTube, if you want to... Um, 
you know, try to look at the description box later on for the video, um, et cetera. The other TikTok channel, um, Sister Betty, is Kofi underscore 40 without the number two. So we have Kofi underscore 40. That's the that's the one that we're on right now. Kofi underscore 40 with the number two is the one that they have blocked out until um, somewhere around 11 o'clock a.m. or so on um, Sunday in the Rising. So we will still have our October 31st special session on Hollow's Eve. That'll be at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern New York time. And that one will be on Kofi underscore 42. So that will be back up by then. So we'll have that ready for you guys. That'll also be on Zoom. So we can make sure that our children, if they would like to, can be part of it. And can talk about Hollow's Eve and talk about some of the challenges they go through. And um, young Solomon can be there to speak on things with them as well. So um, we'll try to make sure we're going to ask parents to make sure that they're all ready with their children and stuff so we can all kind of keep um, things at peace. Uh, but we have a lot of different things that will be coming out soon in the next couple of weeks. And we're excited. Um, a lot more travel, a lot more being back on the road. I've been, I told you guys for a little while, at least to the end of the year, I was thinking I was going to be stuck kind of in northeast region of uh, the United States of America for a long time. Um, and um, that looks like it'll be coming up to where we won't be in that area as much. We'll be able to go back on the road. That means that we might be knocking on some people's doors too every once in a while being like, hey, do you mind us? You know, we might be coming in your area, you know, and uh, we might need help with a place to stay or something like that. We don't know. Or if you want to do something in your area, hey, we might be getting a hotel here. Everybody in this area, do y'all want to come together and form and do this? Remember, we're going to be doing baptism stuff soon, all those things. So we're looking forward to having all that great stuff happen. For more information on any of it, just DM us, contact us at the information. Go to kofi-40.com. That's K-O-F-I hyphen O-F-O-R-I dot com. Um, look up hashtag find Kofi. That's not hashtag F-I-N-D-K-O-F-I. That's not only our webs, um, a place you can find us on all our social media platforms, right? But if you're looking for us, but it's also where, where our YouTube channel is uh, or the name of our YouTube channel. Don't forget my wife's YouTube channel or her TikTok page or even, um, you know, her website, Bloom and Flourish. It's not A-N-D, but the letter N, Bloom and Flourish. You can also check out... Um, uh, uh, my son, who has a uh, new YouTube page, 777 Solo Face. It's like Solo, or the first part of Solomon, 777 Solo Face, S O L O F A C E. Um, and you can find him by looking up hashtag find Solomon. Um, you could also find him at Solo Face, 777 Solo Face on Roblox. If your children play Roblox and you guys can play together as well, a way of um, modern, uh, I guess we could say, um, like coming together, assembly, <laughs> things like that for their age group. But you can f follow him on Roblox there as well. But you can also look him up on YouTube. Um, he's got a, a few videos up now. We're trying to catch up on certain things and get some other things built, built to their form. Um, and, um, you know, get him to just live the life of a child. You can see him living the regular life as a child. Also, you can, um, you know, every once in a while, he'll be talking to children about things that we talk about as adults and having little short clips and things like that where you guys can see and recognize and realize what's going on. Um, uh, from And then also, to, and you can find him, uh, we actually have hashtag find Kofi. If you look under that, you can find him. You can also look hashtag find Bloom. It'll, you can also see some of his videos through that. And you can also look up hashtag find Solomon. Um, S-O-L-O-M-O-N. All right. So we're thankful. We're grateful for everybody being on. We appreciate the King, Queen, and each and every one of you. Um, our prayer, as always, is not you just be hearers of this word, but doers as well. And uh, we have so many great things coming up. Just continue to be focused and be diligent. Um, not this Friday. No, actually, hold on. Yeah, not this Friday, but next Friday, which would be November the 5th. That'll be the first Friday of the month. Be ready to go out and bless somebody in your community. We're excited about that. We're thankful and grateful. And um, I will catch you guys later. I will try to put little videos on Kofi underscore 42 just to make sure everybody's still aware of certain things we're doing and let people know stuff that's coming up just in case they haven't been able to keep up with us. So we'll try to do as much of that as we can. Um, so you'll be able to keep up with this. I must get ready to travel, though, and I must be before I travel, make sure that I get stuff ready so that we can start sending stuff out to people who need to get it Um ASAP, really, some of them, you needed it yesterday. So we're going to try to get it to you um, early this week, all right? Thank you so much for being on. Pray for us. Pray for some of our family that's traveling on the road as well. And um, as always, this has been Pastor Kofi, a.k.a. The Shadow Band One, Pastor Servant to Christ, where we are always changing lives one mind at a time by being a voice to the voiceless and speaking the unspoken. And until I have the great privilege, opportunity, and responsibility of being in front of you all again, please remember, as always, that you are loved, you are necessary, you are majestic, you are fearfully and wonderfully made, and you 
which is all of us working together. We shall be the reason this world changes for the better. Bare minimum will be the reason why people who are in this system no longer have to be of it. Shalom, fam.